right, I think it's working. Welcome. I'm Pete. I'm going to start painting. I'm going to work on a uh, campfire scene today. I've got an 8x8 eight eight stretched canvas that I've primed with raw sienna. I'm going to be using uh, acrylic paint. This is dioxazine, dioxazine, dioxazine purple, burnt umber, cadmium orange, and this new color, uh, green gray, that I don't think I've used on anything yet, so I'm going to experiment with that, and white, probably add some other warmer colors when I get to the fire itself. So I've painted a lot of uh, campfire scenes lately, that I'm going to kind of use as reference. Something like these examples here is what I'll be shooting for. So I've got these as my reference images and then a couple of photographs and I'll just kind of borrow things from all of them to create my painting. I really like the, the logs and the color of the fire in this one so I might model today's painting after this. So get started. I might just give myself some reference lines here. I'll just, I'm going to use this uh, water-soluble pencil to just create just some loose framework for my composition here. I'm the same way. The fire is going to be in the foreground here, just in this general area. So, like I said, I like the logs in that one example I showed you. So, I'm going to build something like are showing up, but once we get painting, it won't really matter that much. I got some rocks down here. I always sketch in these rocks, and then when I start painting, they become completely different, so... idea of it. Flames will be kind of lapping up here. And then in the background I'm just going to make it look like there's some sort of out of focus or distant trees. need to sketch those in. But I just wanted to give myself a general idea of where my fire is here in the foreground. And I'll get to painting here. So for my background I'm going to have some just tree trunks and general tree shapes out of focus, so really loose here. And, I, you know, nice dark tree shapes as far as tree trunks and maybe some branches and then some light peeking through all of it, you know, appearing out of focus to make it look like it's in the distance. So I'm going to use some of this green gray here. I just got a large flat brush. Some of this green gray and some white. Pull the dog hair out of my paint here. It's always helpful. Maybe a little bit of this purple. And I'll just start. I have my brush strokes just go vertical. That's the general direction of my tree trunks will be here. that green gray and then a little bit more of my purple get a little bit of the umber in there and start to get a slightly darker value the dog hair is going to be a constant battle I think I'm 
just just creating some blocked in areas for some of the light values of my distant trees. I sketched in where my campfire shape is going to be so I know I want warm colors in there so I won't cover that with too much of my dark here. And I'm just going to gradually get a little bit darker as I get out near my edges. So I'm using my green, gray, purple, and umber. A little bit of water every now and then helps with acrylic paint. Thin it out. It dries so fast, so trying to blend things and get soft edges is an ongoing challenge. darker here so purple, burnt umber, green gray. And using that flat edge of my brush on the canvas start drawing in some tree shapes. same middle values of these this combination of colors here and then you could just have maybe these are leaves and branches up here
brush. Skip around, using different edges, create different marks. in my trees just trying to create layers layers of depth and I'd grab a smaller brush here these are all just simple flat brushes back to my lighter values. My green, gray, white, maybe a little. In my background here, I'll create some more openings between some trees. through the background here darkening up some things take a few layers to get some of the darkest values with these colors and since I know this is all just part of the background I don't have to be too concerned about sharp edges or details the goal is to the end result to have this look a little bit out of focus sharpness in the detail in the foreground of my fire.
So I've got several layers in my background now. And I'm just trying to go through and soften some of the edges by overlapping some things. Again, the goal is to make it look a little bit out of focus so that it falls to the background. So I'm trying to avoid too many sharp lines or sharp edges in the background. Probably looks nice and soft on the screen because of my cheap cameras. Clean off my brush, I'll go back to a lighter value here. And cut out some more highlights here. Light peeking through.
little pass here with some dark value, and then I'll start working on the foreground. focus. I really have a lot of freedom to just let my brush skip around and make all sorts of different marks. So trees and forests, branches, leaves, all that detail. I just want to simulate very loosely. So I'm just trying to make a variety of marks. go back to that background, but I think that'll be good for now. Now I'll just block in some color here to start my foreground and go back to a larger brush. I know this is going to be my logs and my flame, so I'll kind of shape in around that and then uh, get those colors built in. So just as a foundation for my foreground, I'm just going to go nice and dark and then I'll build highlights on top of that. So I'm going to grab my purple and my umber and just load up my brush with both of those. Just kind of imagine some of these rock shapes here just very loosely at this point. And with other layers and highlights I can shape them out a little bit better. But just having some of these brush strokes on here with some general shapes It'll just help me visualize some of that stuff and it'll be easier to to create some of the highlight and surface later. Same thing with my foreground here. If I have my brush stroke going in the direction of the surface that I envision, it just helps to flesh it out and you can see things a little bit better. other layers on top of this so I'm not worried too much about joining these at this point. references that I'm looking at while I paint. These are some other paintings I made. And there's little details of all of them that I want to borrow from in this new painting. And I really like the layout of the logs here, the formation of the logs. I think they just create good contrast. The dark face of these logs and the bright color of the fire underneath them. So I'm going to model this painting after that same composition. So, I'm just going to block in those shapes, those dark shapes of my logs, and then build my light color around it. So, I like this one. I'm standing up here, and I'm just going to use the shape of this large flat brush to just cut these edges and create the shape of this log standing up here in my fire. straight. It's been burning a little bit more. Thank you. 
kind of on a loose idea of where my logs are with the dark value. Just I'll block in the general area of where my flames are going to be, and, and these will take a few layers to bring to life. But I just want to lay some things out here so I can build around it. So I cleaned off my brush, and I'm just going to go into just plain old cadmium orange here. And I know in here I'm going to have a nice glow of my fire, so I'll just kind of build that in and let it gently overlap with the dark color I just laid in. This first layer on here somewhat transparently, it'll go a long way to creating that look of a real flame if you can sort of see through them into the background a little bit. background colors here and just shape in some of these other areas around my flames and fire Point, I pretty much have a first layer on everything. Got some other things to build inside the fire itself, but be a good framework for moving forward here. So switch back to a slightly smaller brush. I might uh, let's throw some other colors here out on the palette. I'm gonna grab some primary yellow. And some cadmium red. And those will help me bring my fire to life a little bit more. So, got a log here. Here's my example image that I'm looking at here from another painting that I made. I like that log that's in the middle there. That hasn't been burned yet. It still has some of its wood color. I want to build that into the same painting here. So some white and a little bit of my umber. A little bit of that yellow will warm it up a little bit. darken up that same value on my brush. And with these flat brushes, I can just use the shape of it to create edges. Go back over 
some of these darker shapes here. The dioxine purple and burnt umber together can make a nice dark value. It's quite a ways away from black, but in the context of a painting with other colors around it, they definitely appear nice and dark and black. So I'll recoat some of these shapes. And you can see my, my brush stroke, the idea isn't just to fill in the shape. Some of the brush stroke and the natural transparency that I'll get with the paint just creates some effect on these, on these shapes that just helps sell texture and it's not just one solid shape. I don't know how well that's showing up with my basic camera gear here, but I'm trying not to just fill in the shape with a solid color. I'm trying to get some just little varieties of value and texture with a kind of a random brush stroke or a loose brush stroke. So I really like the shape of this log here in the foreground. It makes a nice focal point here inside my fire and just shows some depth and shape. So I'm spending some time to just create some detail on that. And my skinny edge of my brush here, maybe from this other angle you can see the skinny edge of the brush on the canvas creates some nice thin lines. And I don't know how well this camera's picking this up, but just kind of simulating that grain of the wood and also creating some shadow at the same time. Go back and darken up some other areas here. It's another coat. fire be for a minute here and I'll continue with some of those dark values and just start to flesh out some of the rocks in the foreground here just kind of bring it all to life together so the the face of my rocks you'll be catching a lot of light and then the back sides of them and the sides facing my point of view here will be nice and dark in shadow so I can use my dark color here to start establishing some of those surfaces and I don't necessarily have a plan for every individual rock here. What I like to do is just just go for it and block in some shapes and then make adjustments as needed. I'll get some nice dark color in here and then I can change the shape and appearance of things as I go when I get to adding some highlight color. So the backs of some of these rocks ought to be nice and dark. Some of that shadow would be cast out onto this foreground surface. So, just trying to get my nice dark value here with purple and umber. And just trying to have my brush stroke follow whatever surface it is I'm trying to simulate, whether it's the back or the shape or edge of a rock or the flat surface of the ground in shadow stroke follow the direction of that surface 
and this is still real loose at this point, so I'm not trying to get too precise or final with anything. some of these rocks to life a little bit more. So I'll go back to some of this color that I used in my background, my green gray and my purple and umber. Just try to mix up a middle tone. It'll end up being something similar to these here. I think that'll make a good base color for some of these rock surfaces. And once I get to the point of adding the light cast from the fire onto the rocks, this can change a little bit, but just to give my mind's eye a little bit more shape to focus on here create some highlight for these rocks just going to show some of their surfaces so I put the shadow on the back of some of these rock shapes and now I'll put a highlight on either the top or the side and this will just go a long way to help show some of the, the depth and distance in front of me here I'm still just kind of feeling out where these rocks ought to be and they'll maybe change and evolve and be adjusted as I go here. meant to be out of focus, ground cover, leaves, little rocks and sticks, so it's just a middle value. And then you can see how my brush stroke is just skipping around on the canvas, intentionally trying to just make a variety of marks. And maybe the only thing I'm paying attention to is that if I'm painting on this flat surface, my brush strokes are kind of aligned along that flat surface of my foreground and if I'm painting on rocks my brush strokes tend to follow the surface of the rock that I'm trying to simulate so all of this is just building up layers at this point the last layers are where I'll be concerned about detail and, and final edges and final shapes So I've got a lot of just sort of flat middle values at this point. And if I come back later and put little highlights on them, it'll start to bring it to life and create that illusion that there's a bunch of surfaces, little rocks and leaves, and all those little details that you could get really crazy painting or if you just indicate them loosely, you get the same effect. Okay, 
Okay, do another code here of the dark value on my logs inside the fire here. Let's get these nice and dark. You know, now the more layers I get in, the more I pay attention to some of my edges. on the warm colors of my fire here. You know, move around this painting and let each layer come to life a little at a time. It's kind of my process for any painting is to not hunker down in any one area and I'll let the whole painting develop together. So I'm going to grab some of my cadmium red and cadmium orange. start to build in some of this glowing color in here. So it's a transition between the glow of the fire itself and then the edge of my log. If you look at a lot of images or if you just look at the real campfire and study how the log, it kind of has these, uh, you know, it's almost symmetrical. The, square edges or the square chunks that become of a log as it burns. It splits into little blocks. It's not necessarily perfectly symmetrical, but it definitely seems like there's a pattern to it. So that's kind of what I'm envisioning in my mind's eye as I create some of these marks.
more light on the subject here. I'm going to take a peek at my example here again. And you can see how I'll gradually build up the brightness. Kind of trying to go for the same effect of this one here. And it's just a little bit at a time, layer by layer, building up that bright color. You can see the highlights on the rocks and the flame itself. So I'll come back to my painting here. Grab a smaller brush, work on some finer details here. So I'm going to grab some purple, some white, get a nice light violet color here. And if I combine that with a little bit of orange, I don't know what color you would call this, but I've found it creates a nice effect to help show the glow some of this flame color. So white, purple, and orange. And I'm gonna start to create some of those edges like the the white the white of the burned log here. Very scientific and technical. <laughs> the white of the burned log. Same brush here. I'll go back to some of my red and my orange. And the shape of this brush is good for good for nothing in that brush stroke, but good for shaping up some of those segments. here and I'm going to go into my nice dark value here umber and purple and create some little edges here my log is splitting apart
So I'm sticking with a dark value here, purple and umber. And I'm going through and just starting to just elevate the contrast here between my light and my dark. Create some edges, some little embers on the ground, some of the edges of my logs themselves. And just build up the detail here. ash color. Have a few sections of that nice and bright. with that same brush here and some middle of the road brown values here. If I look at my example image again here, some uh, texture or some bark on the back of that, this largest log here. I'll start to build some of that in here. Just making some little marks and light touches in that vertical direction that that bark would be. I'll just lighten it up a little bit each time, each pass. Back to my flames here again. Start to give them some more brightness. Let's grab some yellow and white. The white's gonna help the yellow have some opacity.
exact science for me creating some of these flame brush strokes. Set my brush on the canvas and kind of wipe and twist and release. Attempting to create that wispy effect. Get a little bit more orange into that color. some little shapes that are emerging inside there. I'll try to use them and stick with them. Starting to take shape here. So I keep switching back and forth between highlight and shadow, light and dark, and just trying to increase and build up the contrast. Depending on the colors and the and just the viscosity of the paint can affect transparency and how much, how many layers it takes to build up a particular color.
So just like my background trees in the very beginning, with each layer, I get a little bit more precise, a little bit more detail. Brighter highlights, darker darks, and all that just gets built up a little at a time. And the way I tend to work is to bounce around from one area to the next and kind of have everything grow equally. And try not to get too hunkered down or lost in any one area. So I'll let the fire rest here momentarily. And I've been neglecting my, my rocks here. I'll start to bring those to life a little bit more. Go back to a medium brush here. The violet orange color that I mixed up earlier I think will be a good rock highlight color with some firelight glowing on it. spots where I think the light would be hitting these rock surfaces the most. So I'm creating a highlight on the rock. I'm also shaping out the surface of the rock when I do this. Be careful not to overdo it right off the bat. transparent paint so I might just do like a little glaze over some of these rocks and just warm up the color that's already there a little bit through these rocks and out onto my foreground surface here. surface out here. Just imagine a little rock. 
rocks and dirt and pebbles. I'm just trying to create the illusion of that texture here. Take a peek at my example here again. And in a few more layers to brighten some things up here. The flames themselves, the highlights on some of the rocks, more detail to the flame. Stick with that same medium brush, grab some yellow, a little bit of orange, and some white. Lean into the white a little bit. Gonna go smaller brush here. Same color. up some of those nice bright highlight areas if I go nearly to my brightest white here just a touch of yellow and some nice pure white find the innermost part of those bright areas and everywhere just in the low 
all places where I want it to appear brightest. So my 
music stopped here. I'll see if I can get that to play again. Success. All right, I think my final focus here will to be to bring my rocks to life and then some little last details on the flame itself. The lesson to be learned from this stream would be to maybe get some better lighting here. I look, my screen and the painting looks a little bit dark depending on where my head is. So I'll go back to some of that flame highlight color. I had purple, orange, and white. Maybe that was a little too much white. Throw some umber in there, a little more orange, purple. Good enough. Down here on my rocks. I want my rocks to appear like they have some surface texture to them so I don't just create big shapes, kind of a, a series of smaller shapes that add up to a larger shape. some of this highlight start showing sharper edges to my rocks and also helps to emphasize the light of the fire this creates that glowing effect thought I had my music replaying here there it is Production of my stream is a work in progress. If anybody ever listens this far to hear me whine about it, congratulations. Thank you.
So I'm just attempting here to build up a little more surface texture and variety of value. I realize it looks pretty dark on the screen, but you gotta believe me, it's spectacular on the canvas in front of me. Lots of subtle tonal variation and just a variety of little brush strokes. My goal is to create the effect of just ground surface, dirt, rocks, sticks, leaves, all without getting very precise with the detail. one more pass of highlight on my rocks and my fire. See if I can squeeze in some detail on the fire here to finish off this stream. Stick with that small brush here and I'll go into white and some yellow. Create some little wispy edges. The idea is try and show that flame in motion. Go with an even finer brush here. that I'm having some uh, internet connection issues here so I think I'm going to wrap up this stream. I included a lot of the steps to create this painting. Maybe spend a little bit more time after the stream is finished adding some detail. Uh, you can check out the finished product to be shared on my Instagram page and uh, thanks for watching.